my god so i've been living in this area now for about three years and i didn't even realize that we've got this amazing kind of bush area within probably two minutes of where i live we've had two lockdowns so i think a combined um, day count of about 140 days and i could have been walking this track kind of every every few days but i didn't even know it was here and the reason i'm so excited is I've got this guy to share with you today. It's um, Instax's uh, new mini Evo camera, uh, which is their new premium camera in the range, uh, which is uh, just super exciting. And the reason I'm so excited is, uh, you know, we've had the SQ10 and the SQ20 in the past, which has been a nice premium camera, but this is actually a hybrid camera printer combo. So you can use it as both a camera. So just point and shoot, uh, print your photos on the spot um, or you can actually pair it with your smartphone and use it as a smartphone printer as well which is just pretty amazing so we're gonna make our way a little bit deeper into the bush here find a nice place and uh, get set up Okay, so before we get any further, I guess we better get some film in this camera so we can take some photos as we go. So pretty easy to do that. Obviously, like most other insect cameras, just flick open that um, bit on the back of the, the camera there, get your film. And it's extremely important to make sure you pop that away in your bag so it doesn't, uh, so you don't litter, especially in these uh, environments. So lining up the little yellow mark there with the camera, close it up, and I don't know whether you can hear that, but it's starting to kind of make this little wearying noise. And don't worry, you haven't done anything wrong, it's not sick, it's just popping out this, um, this dark slide here, and what that does is it just protects the film uh, from any light coming in and, um, and, uh, and, and clouding the film or exposing it early. So um, now you've done that, you're uh, ready to shoot. And I hope you really enjoy these uh, in-depth looks at um, you know some of Fujifilm's new cameras and, and also some of my film camera stuff. Um, look, if there's anything you do want to see, uh, any topics you want me to cover, um, or if you just really appreciate it, please uh, make sure you like and subscribe. Um, you know, I am a new channel and I'm growing, and and that really helps. And it's the, the the best way you can support me and ensure that I continue to do this. So I really appreciate it. So while I find myself a a nice area. If you can hit that like and subscribe button, I'd really appreciate it. So already one of my favorite things about this is if you press the playback button, and you've got your image there, the selfie I've just taken before. Um, you've got this little print lever there on top of the camera, so very much like an old film camera. So if you just flick this, check this out. It does take a little bit longer depending on what print mode you're using. I'm currently using the rich print mode, and then you've got that natural one as well. So here you can see it coming out. So straight out the gate, I just love that little kind of flicky um, print switch. I think that's just a really nice touch. Something that I am missing at the moment, though, and it's um, you know, and I have again, I have been using this um, this camera for a, a month. Uh, but something I keep going to do is putting my eye up to the camera. Um, but unfortunately, there's no viewfinder. So there is a what you you, you call a, a cold shoe on the top of the camera there. So what I'm going to do is actually buy an external viewfinder slot it in on the top and then when I want to use that viewfinder I've got just a little um, kind of guide, a guide at the at, at the top there but um, you're not going to get that immersive viewfinder experience uh, with this camera and it's funny because obviously you've got a viewfinder in the Mini 11 um, and some of the other cameras but just not the Mini Evo at this stage so again very very well thought out with the the cold shoe because you can put things like a little LED light so nice uh, for these environments where it's quite dark um, or you can put a, a nice little viewfinder in there on the top and, 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 and have that option as well so you can use it a, um, as, a, as a normal type of camera and just have centre focus 
So, um, because obviously you're not going to see the focus point uh, through that additional viewfinder if you did go with that option. So if you just had it in the center of the frame, you can kind of judge where you're going to be focusing while using that uh, accessory. So a couple of really well thought out um, settings on the camera here is you can actually dial in an exposure setting. So, you know, plus or minus um, exposure compensation there, which is really nice. Um, so I like to dial it down a stop just to so you don't get any of those nasty highlights. Uh, if you go across, you've got a self timer, so two to 10 seconds, uh, which is nice. If you, you know, want to stand up on a tripod and, um, and, uh, and take some self timer shots. Uh, you've also got a flash setting, so you've either got um, auto flash, forced flash, or suppressed flash as well, which is, which is quite nice. You've got some nice flash options if you want to get creative. I've just kept it on auto flash for now. Uh, and then you've also got a macro function as well, which allows you to get really close, which will be nice for this woodland type photography, getting nice and close to some of those leaves as well. So uh, we might put that, um, we might leave that off for now, but we might use it in a little bit. I always find when you're walking through these wooded areas that uh, it's always good to to make sure somebody's already kind of run through it or, or walk through it before you because my goodness you just get hit with all these cobwebs and cobwebs because the spiders have been creating their little spider webs across the trees and if and nobody's walked through or run through it before you be prepared be prepared okay Let's talk about the features of the camera and the buttons and dials. First we have the beautiful 28mm lens, which can focus from 10cm to infinity. This is great for general documentary, street and landscapes. And if you rotate the lens, it changes the lens. There are 10 different lenses to choose from. You have the normal lens, the vignette, soft focus, blur, fisheye, colour shift, light leak, mirror, double exposure, and the half frame. Above the lens, we have the LED flash with the auto, suppressed, and forced flash settings discussed earlier. The shutter button sits to the left of this, and you would use this one when the camera is in portrait orientation. As standard now on most insect cameras, we have the selfie mirror. Now this is just super handy, especially when trying to take group shots. In order to turn the camera on and off, there is a button on the bottom left. On the back of the camera, we have the LCD display, perfect for changing settings and viewing your shot before you take it and, re and reviewing your photos before printing. We have a menu button and directional buttons surrounding this, a back button and a play button to review your photos. On the top plate of the camera, you have the awesome print lever shown earlier. The shutter button sits to the left of this. The cold shoe sits in the middle of the top plate so you can add your accessories. And finally the filter wheel. Twisting this activates one of ten filters. These filters are normal, vivid, pale, canvas, monochrome, sepia, yellow, red, blue and also a retro filter. So if you combine the different lenses and filter options, this gives you a hundred different expressions to choose from, so you can really get creative with your photographs. On the base of the camera, you have a micro USB cable slot and a micro SD card slot to charge your camera and to increase the base storage from 45 images internally to a greater size. This obviously depends on the size of the card that you put in. Now two of the most exciting features in this camera, the first one it actually has face detection which is, just blows my mind. And the reason I'm so excited about this is it just shows where Fujifilm are taking their Instax cameras, they're taking them extremely seriously. They're looking at those premium and budget options. Um, putting things in like face detection just shows kind of where they're really trying to push that technology. So the second um, most impressive uh, feature is the remote shooting. So you can actually now and I'll just turn the camera around here. So you can now set your camera up on a tripod. And you can see on the back here, this is showing us uh, uh, the view of the, the, the camera as it stands. 
However, if we head into the uh, the app here and we go to the remote shooting section there and we turn on the live view, you can now actually see that it's showing me the image that's coming from the camera and you can see now it's got the um, camera pairing with the phone icon on the back of the camera. So if we now move around, you can now see we're in the frame and this is live so you can actually see exactly where you are in the frame and when you're ready to shoot you just press the camera section there and it takes the photo and it's now receiving the recorded image so that image is now on your phone and you can now decide to print or cancel and then try it again Okay, now we've spoken a lot about the camera, but what about the new Mini Evo app? Now I've just opened this on my phone here, and as you can see up the top, the printer, uh, sorry, the camera automatically connects to it. It's got nine sheets of film out of 10 remaining, and it's fully charged, which is fantastic. Down the right hand side here, we have the three modes. So let's start with the direct print function. So this one up the top here, so you just select that, then go down to select image, which is right there. And I've just selected my uh, favorites uh, in, my, in my phone. So we will click on uh, one of these photos here. Um, and uh, as you can see just here, you can edit your, uh, your print. So if we click on that, it gives us the ability to zoom, rotate, add filters, and also do a basic correction as well. So I'm going to rotate that around and it'll zoom it in automatically. Then we'll head down to the filter here. You can change it to monochrome, sepia, or do an auto correction. If you go into the correction tab, you've got brightness, contrast, and saturation. So you can play around with those as well. And you've got saturation there. We'll just bring it down a touch and once you're ready to go and once you're ready to go you just press the print button and confirm so I'm going to print in the rich mode and print and you can see that, like I said earlier the rich mode takes a little bit longer than the normal mode uh, but what this is doing now is transferring the file from the phone to the mini Evo hybrid camera which is uh, which is really cool so you can use this like a link printer uh, obviously using mini film to print photos from your uh, um, iPhone or Android device directly to the printer and the third uh, setting here is the transferred images so this is where you transfer images from your camera to your mobile in order to print them or you can actually upload them onto um, a social media platform as you can see, we've now received the three images that I've transferred and I've selected to transfer across. And you can see how they've got the Instax border around it. So what uh, Fujifilm have decided is so many people like to share their images taken on Instax devices online and you've always had to take a photo of them or scan them on a, a scanner. But now you can actually transfer your images across to your smartphone with the border on it. And if you then click on one of these images, it'll bring it up. You can either delete it print it or you can edit save it so if you click on the edit save menu it'll bring up the instax print with a little bit of a shadow around it and then a background and what you can do there is you can go through and change the background color which is pretty amazing so that actually goes quite well the light the light blue the other thing you can do is you can have a clear cut background so it'll just have the image or and if you click on select background image you can pick a an image that works from your camera roll so I've selected an image from today just to go around that border of just some trees and, and whatnot in the background um, you can um, then click OK um, you can then change the background image or adjust the background image if you wanted to maybe make it um, you know zoom it in rotate it or maybe we want to correct it a little bit 
and just dim it down a little bit so the Instax print pops out. Click OK. And once we hit save, it lets you save it to our camera roll. So if you want to now post this on Instagram or do something with it, and I'll bring this up in my photos now. And there we have it. So there it is. So you can now share that on Instagram, Facebook, social media, you know, wherever you want to put it. So look, thanks for joining me this morning. I guess just to sum up, if you're interested in the uh, Mini Evo, you've got any questions, pop them down in the comment section. But I guess the big thing for me is it's just such a, such a cool tool, real creative. You know, you've got some really nice flash options. Uh, that remote shooting piece is just, it's just awesome. I just love how Fujifilm are pushing their cameras and really trying to try and do something a little bit different to their uh, their other ones. You've got a nice lens there, nice fast lens, and uh, things like face detection and things like that. The one thing that does kind of irk me a little bit is just that is just not having a viewfinder. I do wish I just keep finding myself bringing it up to my eye, but then again, I am a photographer, so I'll just. You know that'll just take me a little bit of time to adjust and like i said i've got a an external viewfinder coming in the mail so once i've got that i might pop it on and do a quick video just to show you you know what i think about that and does it really um add any benefits or or any other opportunities or is it just something that i need to get over personally and learn how to shoot without a without a viewfinder other than that though it's a it's a great camera I love the ability to, uh, and the thing that was missing from the X, uh, SQ10 and the SQ20 was the ability to take the photos from the camera and send them to your phone so you can use them on social media and things. And being able to do that with the Instax border uh, and, and applying other backgrounds, again, just adds another dimension again to what this camera is capable of and what you can use it for. And again, when you're looking to spend this mon much money on an, an Instax camera, it just helps to kind of uh, clarify why you're why you're spending that amount of money. But that's because it's just so functional. It's got so many different things you can do with it. Um, so look, I do recommend this camera. It's something that I've been really excited to shoot with for a long time. Uh, if you've got any things you, you I haven't covered off that you want to know about this camera or compared to other Instax cameras in the range, just let us know. Uh, us know but down below. Otherwise, please again like and subscribe. It's uh, your support really does help uh, my channel and uh, I guess we'll uh, see you next time. Thanks again. Cheers.